transmission. Transmission means power will be in one place, but action will be in some different place. Like when we ride our bicycle, we pull on the middle, but the wheel is spinning on the back. So we are using chain for transmitting the power on that. Okay. So chain, timing belt, these are the things that can be used for transmitting the power. Okay. This is another thing for transmission. Gear system. Okay. Gear is another very, very important for robotics guys. Okay. Who work with robotics, they need to understand the gear. Number one, gear can reduce the speed. Number two, gear can change the direction, like from this direction to that direction. It can change the direction. Number three, it can reduce, it can increase the speed. Okay. Number four, it can even, how to say, change the form, like rotation form to linear form or linear form to rotational form. So gear is very, very important for the, for robotics, okay. For, you know, for your information, when we use gear, uh, the, you, the, uh, the speed and the power is inversely proportional. Like if we use Spar gear, if you reduce the speed, then it will increase the power. Even in the warm gear, you know, in our car window or for the cleaning the uh, wiper motor, they really used warm gear. Okay, it it in it decreased the speed one is to eighty. That means it decreased the speed eighty times, but surprisingly it's increasing the power 80 times minus few mechanical loss okay even the mechanical loss loss also can be reduced by using lubricant okay so gear is another very very important uh, issues of robotics this is the link mechanism link mechanism means uh, you know by using one power it's uh, it's linking with a number of things. So by using one movement, it's doing two, three jobs. Okay, so keep in your mind how we can do it. Like in our first uh, significant robot, like in uh, Chomdo robot, one was we were just putting up the uh, basket, putting up, and when it was putting up, it's also going forward. So by using just one motor action, one power, it's also going up and it's also going forward. Okay, so that kind of things are called link mechanism. Now we would like to discuss about few uh, motors, okay? Basic motors. In robotics, in embedded systems or in digital systems or in hardware systems, we really use mainly three kinds of motors one is dc motor another one is servo motor another one is stepper motor okay let us discuss about a stepper motor uh, a stepper motor means step by step motor like if you will give power it will take one step like it was here it will give power it will take one step okay Again, power up, second step. Again, power up, third step. So actually, a motor have four connections. When it will give power on this connection, then it will take this movement. If you will give this connection here, it will take this movement. If you will give connection here, it will take this movement. If we will give connection here, it will take this movement. And then again come here. Okay, this is called stepper motor. The advantage is, uh, 
the rotation you want, the degree you want, it can be pre-programmed. Like if you want a 90 degree rotation, so you can see here, we need five steps. If you want 180 degree rotation, we need 10 steps. 360, 20 steps. If you want five rotation, 100 steps. So it's, it, it's, it can be pre-programmed. Okay. Before some days back, most of the printers, even the uh, uh, floppy disk drive, even some CD-ROM also was building by using this kind of a stepper motor. But the problem is stepper motor become heavy because since we have to use four coils for four, uh, four steps, usually four steps. So it become number one become uh, 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 four coils become means complex, structure become complex, become expensive become heavy weight, okay, difficult to uh, make the program, okay, so these are the problems with stepper motor, okay, mainly expensive and it become heavy weight, okay, so now in robotics, we move from stepper motor to DC motor, DC motor is very simple, very cheap, you know, even 50 taka by using 50 taka, you can get a DC motor in uh, in, in Bangladesh market. Okay, and the technology is very simple. There are two fixed uh, magnet, north pole, south pole, and you are having a coil. Okay, and there are two brushes on your foot. So, when my this leg is on this brush, positive brush, and this leg is on negative brush. The coil is built in such a way so that my right arm, my right side will become north pole and left side will become south pole. But as I told you, there are fixed magnet on right side is north pole and the fixed magnet on left side is south pole. So that one is south north pole and my body also become north and in the same way in this side that is a fixed magnet with south pole and my body is also south what is going to happen they are going to push me okay so i will spin and you see my leg will change the uh, brushes so now, now my right leg is on left uh, the uh, minus brush and left leg is on pass brush. So when our con my confluent will be like this, then again my this body will become north, and this body will become south. Again, I'll take a spin. That is the way. Very simple technique. Okay, so that why this becomes so cheap, easy to control, easy to drive. Okay, so that why this motor become very cheap, become very popular. Okay, in robotics we use. A number of purpose we use DC motor, but there are two very very important issues involved in DC motor. Number one is speed. Okay, the speed is too high; it cannot be controlled very easily. Okay, and number two is so number one is speed. Sometimes we need to reduce the speed. Sometimes we need to uh, enhance the speed. Like for quad couple, we need to enhance the speed. Okay. And the second thing is the controlling, okay, like we want to take three spin. In DC motor, you cannot do it. With the load, maybe with the same power, it will take five spin, but without load, it will take seven spin. So, to overcome this thing, we are using, one is gearbox. Oh. And third thing is the power. Usually the DC motor become very, very low power DC motor. Okay? You can stop by using your fingers. Okay. So number number one is speed. Number two is, uh, as I told you, power. And number three is controllability. Okay. So these three things can be handled. Number one by using gearbox. If we use a gearbox, if we reduce the speed, 
power enhance or if we will use opposite gearbox the speed will enhance but the power will become low okay so one is gearbox and another one is feedback like we can use some feedback system with the motor shaft so that we can uh, we can we can we can read how many spins it have taken so if we can take the uh, if you can take if you can get the if you, or if you can sense the rotation or every movement from each point we can uh, dc motor can be used as a stepper motor okay so yes we are we are we are using feedback system with a dc motor for getting the input from the motor how far it ha or how many rotation it have taken or how many degree it had rotated okay so number one is gearbox number two is feedback system by using these two things uh, dc motor can be used just like a it can be replaced uh, okay so by using these two things one is gearbox another one is feedback system uh, stepper motor can be placed in servo motor actually these two things are embedded if you will see inside the servo motor you will see there is a gearbox and if you will dismantle it you will see there is a pod potentiometer okay it's taking the feedback like how many speed it have taken okay so by taking that input it has a control system inside the motor okay it's giving you the degree so again oh so servo motor i didn't explain about servo motor servo motor is a closed loop motor like if you will say 90 degree servo motor that means it will take 90 degree this way and minus 90 degree plus 90 degree zero 90 zero closed loop it can go from this position to this position this position to this position okay if we say 180 degree servo motor it can take 180 degree okay if we say 360 degree doesn't mean it is spinning no okay it's coming here and going back coming here going back okay so that is called a servo motor very very popular in robotics okay yeah so servo motor is very very useful okay students are using the servo motor for making their demo project okay demo system they are using randomly okay these are very cheap from 200 taka to 2000 taka okay so this is very very popular so i discussed about three kinds of motor one is dc motor stepper motor and servo motor